This is Ascender, CIQ's automation platform proudly based on upstream Ansible AWX. This means anyone using a product based on AWX can easily migrate to Ascender to get CIQ's industry best service and support. Ascender allows an enterprise to reliably orchestrate their automation. Think of it as a traffic control tower for your Ansible playbooks. Here you can see the graphical user interface, which is great for regular administration. It's especially useful for any users that might be less familiar with Linux, like Windows admins or network engineers. Having said that, the GUI is really just an interface for the fully realized API, which means if you have existing tools in your environment that you rely on, like a network monitoring system or perhaps an ITSM like ServiceNow, they too can now take advantage of automation simply by calling a sender's API. In fact, Many end users will only interface with an ITSM that calls the API, completely unaware that they are taking advantage of the platform, which can keep things incredibly simple for them. Aside from API, another must-have enterprise feature is access control to automation. If your playbooks are just sitting on a centralized server that everyone's SSHing into, then there's little control over who can run what. Ascender utilizes a role-based access control system to ensure that each group can tightly control who has access to view, create, and execute anything inside the platform. Users and teams, our version of groups, can be maintained from the access menu manually, which is fine for small groups, but Ascender also supports authentication from many other sources. Likely, the most often seen is integration with Active Directory, where AD groups are mapped to Ascender teams so that users will automatically inherit the correct roles. The platform also supports extensive logging so that anything from administration, admins making changes inside the system, to full automation logging, who launched what playbook, when, and what the results were. This is great for satiating security teams and anyone with compliance needs. The majority of administrators will spend their time in the next five sections. Inventories are just large lists of all the hosts you could operate against. These could be servers that are physical, VMs, or even cloud instances. They could also be your network elements or security appliances, really anything you want to automate against. As with users, I could manually maintain these hosts. But the real power of the platform is that I can build these lists dynamically from virtually any source. That could be any of the cloud providers. So, for example, I could connect to AWS and pull all the hosts, or I could connect to my network monitoring system and pull all of my discovered hosts. I can also utilize a configuration management database, like the one in ServiceNow, to maintain that source of truth. Speaking of ServiceNow, I can easily read and write to their CMDB, so it's easy to keep it in compliance. Next comes projects. This is how I pull playbooks into a sender. When I develop my playbooks, I sync them to the corporate Git repository, be that GitHub, Bitbucket, Git-T, really any compliant Git repo that the platform can reach. This helps me adhere to my corporate standard of development and change control. Once the repository is created, I add it to the project section by simply choosing the source type as get and putting in the URL to it. Another interesting option here is update revision on launch. What this does is anytime a piece of automation is run that uses this project, it will pause and resync the project to ensure the newest version of playbooks are utilized. Again, a way in which you don't have to touch the platform unless you want to. Next is the credentials section which allows you to securely create methods to connect to your remote resources. In short, how do I log into this host? Secrets are stored in SHA-256 bit encryption and are utilized at execution time, which means no sensitive data is stored in playbooks. Again, I can manually create and maintain these credentials, or I can use a secrets engine. A secrets engine is a service that sits to the side and allows for credentials to be requested when needed. Engines like HashiCorp Vault, CyberArk, and Delinea, formerly Thycotic, can be integrated. Finally, the template section is where I marry all of those previous pieces together into job templates. Here I specify my inventory, list of hosts I could possibly run against, my project that holds my playbooks, select my playbook, add my credentials, and then I can save 
and launch my job template. I also have all of these wonderful options in front of me for ease of use. If I was previously using Ansible from the command line, I had to memorize all of my options. Whereas here, I have nice fill in the blank boxes. If I'm unsure what an option does, I can simply click the question mark for more information. Once I've saved my job template, I can simply launch it or I can schedule it to run on whatever frequency I like. Once a job is launched, it pops into the job section. Here I have the list of all the jobs that have run in the last 120 days. Retention in the database is adjustable. This allows me to go back in time and see the results of any job. I can look at the output of its run much like CLI Ansible, but I can also click on an entry to get greater detail on it. I can also see the details on who ran it, when it was run, all of the job details, even including the variables that were passed to it. There are also features like surveys. This allows you to prompt the user for any additional information at runtime. It could be something like text, integer, password, or multiple choice options. This information is then pushed into the playbook as extra variables. Another extremely powerful feature of a sender is workflows. A workflow takes individual playbooks and allows an administrator to chain them together in interesting ways. It allows for reuse of playbooks to perform discrete tasks, but more importantly, it allows differing owners of automation to easily execute job templates that were shared with them. Say for example, I own this first job template top to bottom, but this second one was created by another admin in a completely different group. All they have given me is execute permissions to their automation. I can't view or modify their content. Rather, all I do is add it to my workflow and execute it. If they later make a modification to that job template, I don't have to adjust anything within my workflow. It will simply inherit the changes. This really just scratches the surface of features and capabilities of a sender. We'd be delighted to talk more in depth about how a sender backed by CIQ's industry best support and service can be a game changer for you.